we're in this we're in the middle of a weird kind of attack on Zelda right now where a bunch of people are coming out trying to find something to complain about when it comes to the 2023 game of the year, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. People are complaining about the overworld map. They're complaining about the nonlinearity. They're complaining about Anoma. They're throwing everything at the wall, hoping desperately that something sticks. And it's not going to work, right? Like, Tears of the Kingdom has already kind of established established itself as one of the best games ever made, one of the best Zelda IPs, uh, en- uh, entries in the Zelda franchise. You know, it's seen as a really good sequel to Breath of the Wild. And yet you do have quite a few people coming out trying to say it was disappointing, it was underwhelming, it was this, it was that. Uh, they're trying to do something, Right. And what this all comes down to, really, is that the gaming industry does not like admitting that Zelda is, and always has been, the best action fantasy video game franchise ever, right? You know, it's better than Skyrim, it's better than Dark Souls, it's better than The Witcher, it's better than, like, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, you know? (laughs) Like, it's better than all that. Like, so much so that it's not even really worth comparing them, because, you know, Zelda's been around for... Let's see, almost 40 years now. We're past the 35-year mark, right? You know, you have so many iconic classic games. The original Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, you know, the Oracle games, right? Link's Awakening, right? And, uh, you know, now with the Breath of the Wild games, you know, with these uh, newer entries, like, no longer can people simply say that, like, well, it's not as good because it's not open world. Instead, they have to, like, just dance and around the fact that, like, Zelda is simply better than their favorite games, right? Like, well, I don't like this. Like, it's not to my preference. Like, I don't like this. how this is a kitty game, right? You know, seeing Angry Joe struggle to not talk about Zelda this year has been interesting because, like, oh, it's just like the original. You mean the game that was... That's generally considered among the general population to be one of the best games ever made. You know, Breath of the Wild, that original? You you don't want to play the sequel to that? Why? Like, they reused the map. So? Like, it's not even that unusual. Like, A Link Between Worlds did that. <laughs> You're seeing a lot of people, like, try to try to write that off or ignore it, but it's true. You know, like, again... I would honestly go go uh, come out and say at this point that, like, the reused map is not an issue, okay? Like, it is an excuse, right? When I see people complain about the reused map or, like, the story or, like, the breakable weapons, I just kind of roll my eyes and just assume, assume these people don't know what they're talking about because – You know, like, we went through this with Breath of the Wild, right? We went, like, for an entire year, a little bit longer than that. Like, people were trying to come out and say that this game wasn't as good as it was hyped to be. It was disappointing. It was like a Ubisoft clone. You know, like, you had so many people, like, come out and, like, rally against this game. And in the end, nothing stuck, right? In the end... The game was generally acknowledged to be a masterpiece. It sold 30 million units. It's one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. You know, it's a cornerstone of, like, every Switch owner's library. It was a phenomenon, right? And now they're going to do the same thing with Tears of the Kingdom, right? That That's exactly what we've been seeing over the past month. You know, now that game award season is over, the mask has come down a little bit. And we're seeing that Tears of the Kingdom is the most popular game released this year. You know, coming uh you know, it's considered a fan favorite for a lot of gamers out there. It's it's an amazing release. It's topping a lot of top 10s. It's like it, it's a great game, you know. There is no disputing that at this point. But you're seeing a lot of people trying to. You know, you're seeing a lot of people trying to establish some kind of narrative about this game, some kind of conspiracy, some kind of controversy they can just drum up, you know, like you you just know these guys are trying to come out with something to to rally against. Right. 
And uh, we, we saw this with, like, a lot of other Nintendo games as well. You know, Fire Emblem Engage and Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I think, are the two notable examples. But, like, the reason Zelda is getting so much flack, the reason why it it's always gotten so much flack, is because of how difficult it is for the hardcore gamers to write off Zelda the way they do other franchises, right? With, like, 2D Mario, like, oh, it's too short and easy and it's for kids, right? Like, with Zelda, like, they have to, like, jump through so many hoops. Like, oh, the story isn't good. How, how would you know that? You didn't play it. Well, the combat's too simplistic. How would you know that? You didn't play it. Like, oh, uh, uh, the items are just uh, the same thing we've always gotten. Like, that's not true. Like, again, like, I've, I, I grew up with the Zelda cycle, okay? Like, I've seen people rail against, like, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, you know, Breath of the Wild. Like, this is nothing new to me. But, like, for a lot of people, uh, a lot of younger fans, I think this is like might be the first time they've been exposed to the Zelda cycle, right? This is the first time they've seen game journalists in action, like, trying to, like, underrate the, the newest Zelda game, right? You know, like, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the game we talk about 20 years from now, while, like, Baldur's Gate is completely irrelevant, right? Like, you know, just like 20 years from now, we're still talking about Wind Waker, right? Still talking about Madrid's Mask, right? Like, it's it's a similar situation here. And, like, unlike those games, uh, those games were hated at launch, too, right? Like, I remember how disliked they were. You know, I remember people making fun of Wind Waker and how, like, oh, I don't want a GameCube because I want to play San Andreas, right? Like, I, I remember people doing this right like it was a very common thing and and now we're trying to see them do the same thing with tears of the kingdom but like it feels like with every passing generation like more and more this kind of this kind of narrative doesn't work right more and more i think people are starting to like fall uh become disenchanted with like a zelda's competition and are gravitating more and more to like what nintendo is doing because like you can't just gaslight people into thinking Zelda is a bad IP the way they used to, right? Like, everyone that tries just kind of gets kind of laughed at. You know, people like Angry Joe, who don't play the games, but want to, like, speak as some authority on them. Like, oh, there are way better open-world games out there. Where are they? <laughs> like, name a single game this year that was as impressive as Tears of the Kingdom, and, and you can't do it, right? You bleed about Baldur's Gate 3, but that's li just leading to a culture of people making fun of you, right? <laughs> like, like, even if Baldur's Gate was that good, it's not. Like, they're completely different genres, right? Like, if if uh, if Zelda was, like, the isometric, like, uh, you know, uh, turn-based, like, like, RPG, like, you would probably make fun of it, right? Like, we've seen this happen, right? Where, like, you know, all of these games that are, like, not from Nintendo are worshipped while, like, you know, similar ones are, are just kind of downplayed. Like, you know, just, just look how, like, Mario Rabbids was treated. Or, like, uh, you know, Fire Emblem, you know? Like, <coughs> if they were made by, like, some major PC developer, people would have been all over them. But because they're Nintendo exclusive, there has to be this narrative, you know, established. There has to be some downplaying campaign. And there has to be some kind of complaint. You know, there have to be people, like, religiously like, pushing against the game and, like, pretending it's not good, right? And that's what we're seeing here right now. It, it has nothing to do with the game's actual quality. It has nothing to do with, like, uh, its elements, like, the map or anything. Like, the reason Tears of the Kingdom is receiving so much criticism from certain groups of people is purely because it is a Nintendo exclusive. 